path difference. If we have light or a radio signal traveling from a position here indicated on the left to here, a position indicated on the right, it can take more than one path. And if we consider two possible paths labeled here path A, which is via some reflector, and path B, it can be easily seen that path A is longer than path B. In this particular situation, maybe path A is 5 metres long and path B is 3 metres long. A path difference would be the difference between those two path lengths, 2 metres. Phase is a way of addressing one's position in a wave. If we have a graph of displacement versus angle rather than distance, x, or time, t, then we can address our position within that wave as an angle. This wave is a cosine, and we can see that we have a position labelled here 90 degrees, and a position down here labelled 180 degrees, and so on. It is just another way of referencing where within a wave we are, but this way is independent of wavelength or time period. Phase difference is similar to path difference, is the angular equivalent to path difference. If we consider two waves, drawn here in pink and green, then the phase difference is the angle between those two waves where they are of equivalent phase. So at every point in this diagram, the green wave is slightly ahead compared to the pink wave, and the green wave is ahead by a phase difference delta theta. Delta theta can be calculated as a fraction of a wave multiplied by the angle that represents a full wave. And what we're going to use for a full wave is 360 degrees. We'll leave radians for another day. And to describe the fraction of how far through a wave we're looking, we can use the path difference divided by the wavelength. Another useful equation is going to be that the speed of a wave is equal to the wave frequency multiplied by the wavelength. So what use is phase difference? Well, let us consider two waves. Here we have a red wave on the top and a blue wave on the bottom. And the red wave and the blue wave are indicated as being in phase, by which we mean that at the same time they have the same phase. If we add up these two waves, a process we call superposition, to find out what the resultant effect of both of these waves is, then we get a wave that looks like this. And you will see the displacement is now far higher. And this particular case is constructive interference. The two waves that we added together both agreed on whether they wanted positive displacement at a certain time or negative displacement at a different time. And because they always agree, the influence is greater. It is the sum of both influences. In this example, the displacement of the red wave is out of phase from the displacement of the blue wave. In fact, there is a 180 degree phase difference. Whenever we have a negative displacement for the red wave, we have a positive displacement for the blue wave, and vice versa. And so we can see that the waves never agree. And if we add those two waves together to produce the resultant influence, we superpose these waves and we can see destructive interference. Another important thing to note is that phase difference of 90 degrees is exactly the same as a phase difference of 450 degrees or 810 degrees. That is because the influence is the same. So 450 degrees is just 360 degrees plus 90 degrees. And 810 degrees is just two lots of 360 degrees, that's 720 degrees, add 90 degrees. And so in general we can say that for there to be the same influence, the same effect, the phase difference plus an integer number of a complete cycle has exactly the same effect as just that phase difference. This means we can always subtract an integer number of 360 degrees and get the same influence. The same is true for path difference. So let's look at an example. Here I have two transmitters of waves, transmitter A and transmitter B. We don't know how far apart they are, but they are both detected at position C. 
and we have a wavelength given in this question of 2 meters. So the question is, if the phase difference is 120 degrees, what is the path difference? We can rearrange this equation to get our phase difference multiplied by our wavelength and divided by 360 degrees. That gives us two-thirds of a meter. Of course, we would never write our answer as two-thirds of a meter. We'd always give it as a decimal to the appropriate number of significant figures, whatever that may be. So if AC is 100 meters, what are the possible values of BC? Well, BC is going to be longer, but how much longer? We are given AC as 100 meters. So one possibility is 100.67 meters. That is one path difference longer. Another possibility is 102.67 metres. Because that is one complete wavelength further, plus this path difference. It will have the same effect of producing a phase difference of 120 degrees. And we could continue to add an integer number of wavelengths onto this list. Or indeed, we could subtract an integer number of wavelengths from this list. But of course, the diagram indicates that BC is further. So I don't think it would be any of these as an answer. A popular question that you could be asked is to find possible values of BC where you are given the distance between A and B. In that case, you have to do some geometry to solve that problem. And a diagram is going to be essential in this sort of problem.